2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16, one of them sad chapters to read. In the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, I'm going to look at the names because this is where one of the problems lie with the names. Joram, a son of Ahab, king of Israel, that's north. Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah, that's north. Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Now, we look at his name go down. Uh, they're going to call him, in verse 21, Joram, J-O-R-A-M. And there's a Joram, J-O-R-A-M, the son of Ahab. And what not right now is you got being king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Now you got a co reign. You got a father and son. And the reason, well, not the reason, but the off scene of this is you got north and south, north and south joining each other. And we're going to see in a moment by Ahab, Jezebel, and the daughter of Jezebel, just wickedness. Verse 17, 30 and two years old when he was he, he when he began to reign. He reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, Baal worship, the golden calves. Just mockery. Their own religion, their own priests. You go through it over and over. As did the house of Ahab. So what the house of Ahab's done? Joram, Jehoram, in Jerusalem is doing the same thing. Now what else is going on? For the daughter of Ahab was his wife. Oh. So Ahab and Jezebel has a daughter. Her name is Asaliah. Verse 26, we'll get there. And we'll be reading about her in a little bit. A wicked queen. She's not even, she is one of the rulers of Judah. And she's not even mentioned in Matthew 1. Because first of all, she's not a man. And she's just so wicked. That the son of Jehoshaphat. Remember Jehoshaphat? He kept going, Ahab, I'll help you. You're my people. Your horse is my people. Your ass is my ass. When well, your chariots, we're just buddy, buddy. Well, his son marries into this wicked people. And he carries the wickedness into Jerusalem. So 2 Corinthians, though not written yet. 2 Corinthians 6.14. And you got this trouble many a time. We ran into a woman one time. She's saved. She knows it. She's got children. But she married the wrong man. And we have, we've been praying for her still. She said she was going to go ask her husband, which is proper. Can she come to Bible studies? And we haven't seen her since. Now this is a rule. 2 Corinthians 6.14 written to carnal Christians, written to the church. Be ye not unequally yoked. That's the only place that word yoked is showed up. Together with unbelievers. For what fellowship with the righteous with the unrighteous? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord, that's the only place that word shows up, has Christ with Belia. I mean, that's a wicked child of just vain children of Satan. Communion. Uh, concord is the only time that word shows up in verse 15. What concord? And what part has the what part that he that believeth has with an infidel? That's the first place that word shows up. Infidel. Now you hear that word a lot with the Muslims. You know, we got to kill the infidel. And the only other place that infidel shows up is in First Timothy 5 8. And it's talking about a guy who can't pay can't pay for the bills of his house. So that guy who can't pay to build his house is likened to one that's unsaved. And when you get these mixed marriages, and I'm not talking about colors and races and all that, I'm talking about religion. It's damnable. It's harsh. And more so with children. And we have that, we have the illustration today in 2 Kings 8. 
Jehoshaphat is a good king of Israel. But he keeps venturing off in other places where he doesn't belong. Now, Jehoshaphat doesn't really badly sin himself. I can say that. But, oh, his son that he brings up. We know how bad Ahab is. We know how bad Jezebel is. And can you imagine this child of Jehoshaphat coming and marrying into that family? For the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now notice the mention of the wife. And then the, the evil. The marriage, the family, the in-laws. Caused this man to do wicked and evil that his father did not. Families can destroy Christians. I've seen it. I have seen Christians walk away from, from the Lord. And they start off, well, we can't go Sunday because we've got the family picnic. Everybody get together. Absolutely not. You're, you're on the road to destruction. Say what you will. I've witnessed it many times. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. He's not the king of Israel. He's the king of Jerusalem. He's the king of Judah. They're doing right. They got the temple. They got the priest. They got the law. But we've forsaken it. As did the house of Ahab. So Israel's come down south. As did the house of Ahab, the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah. Well, it's on God's mind. For that to be written, God's. If I did not have an oath of my word to David, for David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him always a light to his children. Now you look at that verse right there and you say, oh, that sounds, sounds good, you know. And if you just read your Bible to get, hey, I got three verses done today. I mean, three chapters done. All right, close my and go out and play. You will miss two references in the Bible that will go with this. Always a light. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Scripture was Scripture. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was with God, capital W. And the Word, capital W, it was God. And the same was the beginning with God. And all things were, were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the... Light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. There's that light. Verse 7. Same came for a witness to bear witness of that light. Capital L. That all men through him might be might believe. He was not that light. Just John the Baptist. But that capital is Jesus. Jesus who would sit on the throne of David one day come in future. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, that light, and his own received him not. Well, that's interesting, because that light we read back there, John chapter 3. John chapter 3. The Holy Spirit, I, I, I keep saying always, I don't know if it's a good illustration or not, but the Holy Spirit does not play Scrabble with the words. He doesn't look at his type, oh, i got five letters here. I can, well, how can I use them? Holy Spirit uses the words that he uses, and that's the danger and the damagement of a modern Bible that changes the word for clarity. The Holy Spirit didn't give us the word for clarity. He gave it for the prophecies of Jesus Christ, the word of God as God said it. And we want John 3, oh, 19. And this is a condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, 
that his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Now back to John. I mean, back to Kings. Uh, Second Kings eight, verse nineteen, is a prophecy of Jesus Christ coming. And when when Gabriel comes to Mary, he says, "Of the seed of David, of the throne of David." Verse twenty. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram, that's Jehoram. Now this is where it gets confusing. I think we had this confusion when we were back talking about, oh, wait a minute, isn't this, a, this, that's one of the problems that lies with names. And you got to wonder, <laughs> Who named their child after who that these two kings that are together become friendship together? They just happen to have the same name for two boys. That's not coincidental. They spell a little bit different. But the name given in uh, verse number, where was this read it? Verse number 22 and 23. Well, that's the spelling. Verse 21, that's the spelling of the king of Israel. And 29 has both different spellings. Yeah, and so am I trying to be like that king? So Joram went over to Zar and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him, surrounded him about. And the captains of the chariots and the people fled into their tents. Yet, ye, yeah, yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. There's a revolt of Esau, Edom. Genesis 27, 40. This was a prophecy. Look how many years we got to go back for this one. When the Bible says Jesus Christ is coming back as a lion, he hasn't yet, but he will. Uh, Genesis 20, verse 40. Isaac has just blessed Jacob. Jacob has taken off. Esau comes in and the father gives him a blessing, a secondary blessing. He can't give him the firstborn blessing because that's now Jacob. But look what he says in verse 40. Because he has given Jacob the entire house, the entire home, the entire land. Everything has been put under Jacob. Now Esau. And we read in verse 40. And by thy sword... Shalt thou live? You're going to be a warrior. You're going to be a fighter. And shalt serve thy brother, Jacob, Esau, I mean, Jacob, Israel. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And here we go. There's that prophecy. Now, what's the dominion of Esau? He's got his own king. He says, Israel, on you. And they're not ever really put under Israel anymore. As a matter of fact, when, when Judah is called into captivity by, by Babylon, they're running to Esau, and Esau is like, hey, hey, put them in bonds or stocks, whatever, and selling them to the Babylonians. So here is that, that prophecy of Isaac, how many years later, but now here it is. Esau has been finally set free. It's Esau's grandchildren, 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 grandchildren. And yet Edom revolted, verse 22, in the, uh, the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. So Joram, Jehoram is losing his control of people and land by associating himself with other gods, with a family he has nothing to do, should have nothing to do with. And the rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Joram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hazahiah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the twentieth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, so see there's two of them, king of Israel, north, did Azahiah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign south. See, if you just read sometimes with... Trouble like that. I don't understand contradiction. 
Just read it slowly sometimes. Two and two and twenty year old was Azahiah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Well, that's a long period of time. And his mother's name was Azahiah. Now run that back to verse 17. That is the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, and she will come back into the picture. The daughter of Amri, king of Israel. And a daughter can be a granddaughter. That's that simple one. People have problem with that one. And he walked, as Ahiah walked, in the way of the house of Ahab. Now, what's the house of Ahab got? Don't they have the golden calf? Don't they have the, the image of Baal? Don't they have the false worship? And is it not being passed from father to father to son to son? Let's go back to Exodus chapter 20 and see what God says here. Exodus chapter 20. This idolatry religion, whether you whatever you call it, because it's all through time. It's the Babylonians, it's the Catholics, it, it's through the Romans, the Greeks. Chapter 20, verse 5 in Exodus. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visit iniquity of the fathers. Now, now, that would be good just right there. But we got more. Upon the children of the third and fourth generation to them that hate me. Why did God put that in there? Well, let's look at what we got here. We got Ahab. We got Jehoram. We've got three sons of this family, and then we got a son that's not even of his family, Jehoshaphat's son, which is son-in-law, and then his son, I don't know what that would be, but Azahiah, here are three and four generations serving, serving idols that they've been taught by their fathers and their mothers and their grandparents. And when you look at the dangers of the Catholic religion, and the biggest thing is, well, my parents were in, my grandparents were in. It's my grandmother's church. And that's the danger of saying, oh, we need to have our, our grandmother's church because some people's grandmother's church is a Catholic church. My sister bows and puts herself to the Catholic church, though she's never been in it. But her mother was part of it and her grandparents were part of it. I don't have to be in it, but that's my family religion. So when we throw cute little mottos out there, your grandmother's church, you got to be very careful because guess what? Some people's grandmother's church is the Catholic church. But it looks pretty and looks nice on the billboard. Not always right. Because who was as the highest mother's church? The church of Baal. Right there. You got to get back in the Bible. His mother's name was Asahiah, and she's going to come back, the daughter of Amri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, which is horrible, terrible, wicked, evil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Baal, uh, Ahab. Excuse me. And he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. Now, look, look at that. You've got unity of Jerusalem, uh, Judah. You've got the unity of Israel together, and it's not God. That's America today. America's got unity. She's en engrossed herself with fornication and adultery with all the gods of the world. With a very little Jesus. Very little. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab. I'm glad God puts that in there because it's getting confusing. To war with against Hazel, king of Syria. Now remember, that's the guy that killed Ben-Hadad. Remember, he's met with Elijah. Hey, he's going to recover that disease. He went, and you're going to be the king. You're going to be wicked. You're going to do damage to Israel. And he goes in there. He gets himself a thick cloth. Got to make sure you get the job done. I'm going to wet that cloth. I'm really going to get this job. And smothers the king. Now he's the king. Now Israel's going to go battle him. King of Syria in Ramoth Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. Well, he ain't going to get no victory because he's not serving God. And King Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel. That's a 
that's a known place in Israel, of the wounds which the Syrians had given him in Ramah when he fought against Hazel, king of Syria. And, ha and Asahiah, I'm, I'm getting these names wrong, God forgive me. And Asahiah, the son of Joram, the king of Judah, south, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, north, and Josiel because he was sick, their family. Got to go see my, I think, brother-in-law, something like that. I don't know family relations. That, what, what a, what a, what an ending to a chapter. I mean, you got famine, you got a woman who serves the Lord, she does right, she gets her property back. You got Ben-Hadad, a Syrian, he's like, well, let me go to the God of the Jews. That God has more answer than I do. And then you got a revolt of that kingdom. And then you got a mixed marriage of God versus anything else. And then look at the mess that's going on. Ever since they got married, look, Edom's gone, Libna's gone, and now we got a battle, and now I'm injured. Don't mess with other gods. The God of the Bible.